Hello everyone, welcome to Data Science Community. In today's lecture, we are performing one machine learning project. Okay, so in this video, we are performing credit card fraud detection. Okay, so whatever data set I'm using in this video, I will provide the notebook and data set link in the description. You can go and check it out that link. Okay, so let's, without wasting our time, let's start our project. So first, these are libraries we want in our project and one more library which I am using here is Scalon. Okay. So NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib and C1. These are the basic library you want in each and every machine learning project. Okay. I already make one video on Pandas and Pandas function which is basically used in our machine learning data science and data analysis project link is in the description you can go and check it out that video also okay so these all libraries we need to import first okay so after that we need to read our data set okay so for that here we use pd dot read underscore csv it is a pandas function which we use to read our csv file and in our next cell or for running these cells you need to click shift plus enter okay so in our next cell we have our shape function which return us with the shape of our data set okay so here we have 284807 rows and 31 columns in our data set okay and by using this head function we can print uh, starting five rows of our data set okay or you can mention here the number of rows you want if i write 10 then it will return the 10 rows starting 10 rows of the data set okay if you want last 10 rows you need to write tail instead of head okay if you write tail then it will print last 10 rows of the data set okay now our next function is info okay so info function is used to return the information regarding each and every column we have in our data set okay so here it will print the number of columns okay in first row it will print number of columns in our data set data set name of that column rows okay count and last is the data type of each and every column okay next is so here we have our target column is class so for finding the unique categories in our class column here i use values underscore count function okay so here we have two categories zero and one here one is fraud one, here one is denoted for fraud and zero is for valid okay. whatever the fraud transaction happened in the data set, present in the data set is denoted by z one and the valid transactions are denoted by zero okay so here it will so in the next cell it will more clear to you so here i use uh, fraud variable in which i inserted all the fraud values present in my data set okay so here here we have our data set df and in this we need we need only those values which is fraud okay which is for fraud transaction so for that here we have df dot class which is our column name and which is uh, which is our column name and then equals to equals to one okay so in class uh, in class column all the values which is one is stored in the fraud variable and this and the value which is equals to zero will store in valid variable okay so here we print here we print fraud transaction okay total count of fraud transaction total count of valid transaction okay 
so here i store all the values in fraud and valid variable and in this print statement i provide dot format length of fraud and length of valid okay so here i have 492 fraud transactions and 284315 valid transactions okay now here we have detailed description of amount okay amount which is transferred using fraud transaction okay so here we have count of 492 okay so 492 rows con con contains fraud transaction and its mean is this standard deviation minimum minimum maximum all the details work you can get by using this describe function okay and similarly we have our amount detail for valid transactions okay and this was the fraud variable which we use here okay and this amount is a column name which is present in our data set okay and describe is a pandas function which we use to find descriptive statistics of our column or our data set okay next is we are plotting correlation matrix okay so what is correlation matrix correlation matrix are the matrix which shows correlation or how every features are correlated with each other okay and can help us predict what are the features that are most relevant for the prediction okay so that's why we use correlation matrix here okay so this is so this is our correlation matrix okay okay so this is our correlation matrix and we can see that in our amount column okay in our amount column from this side and this side in x axis this was our this is our amount and class column and in y axis this is our amount and class column in in spite of that these two columns there is no relationship between any columns okay you can see that clearly here okay there is no column related to each other instead of every column is related with amount and class okay so here amount is our most important feature okay now we need to separating the x and y values here x is our independent feature okay and y is our dependent features or we can say that x is our input parameters and sorry x is our input parameters and y is our output values okay so for separating them i store the value of uh, so here we have our x variable in and in x variable i stored my whole columns instead of this class column okay and in y variable i stored only my class column okay now here we print the shape of these two variables and in this line we store the value of x and y okay in a form of array in x data and y data variable okay in this we we are having our value in the form of columns and here we restore the values in our form of arrays and p arrays okay now we need to train and test training and so now we need to training and testing the data by vocation okay so now we need to separate our training and test data so we in every machine learning project we need to divide our data set into two groups training set training set and testing set okay or for training set training set is used to, to train our model and testing set is used to, to test our data okay on the basis of their training okay so for splitting training and test data here we use sklearn dot model selection 
and we are importing train underscore test underscore split function to split our data set into our two groups okay so these are these are the variables which we are using okay and we are splitting our x data and y data here okay this was our test size okay and now you can run this cells now we need to building our random forest model using sklearn okay so here we need to import port from our sklearn our random forest classifier okay so for using this classifier we need to first create a object of this classifier so we store the random forest classifier method in our sl sorry cls which is classifier so you can also use here as rfc which is random forest classifier okay okay instead of cls we can also use rfc for random forest classifier okay so here we use fit method of this random forest classifier to train our model okay and here you need to provide the parameters input parameters capital x underscore train and y underscore underscore train okay these are the variables present here okay so that these variables we can use here to train our model okay this was the input and this was the expected output of that inputs okay now in y predict we store our predicted value Okay, you can also check this predicted value. Add one more cell here. I'm sorry, right, print y underscore predict, which is our predict variable name. Okay, and here we have our y predicts value. Okay, but the value is not printed yet. Okay, so next we need to check the accuracy of our model for that here i use sklearn.matrices import classification report or accuracy score okay in classification report you can also have your accuracy and if you want only accuracy of your model then you can also use accuracy underscore score method okay so here we have 99 percent accuracy and this was our classification report here we have our precision value recall value fn score fn score and support and here we have our accuracy okay so that's all for this video this was the beginner friendly project if you are beginner and try to learn machine learning start doing small projects for practical knowledge okay i hope you all enjoyed this video thanks for watching like share and subscribe for more such videos